Hi there, Brian Gracely here at DevOps Enterprise Summit uh, with theCUBE, with uh, SiliconANGLE. Uh, we've been doing coverage sort of all day, lots of videos with a lot of the practitioners, but we're really blessed right now to have Gene Kim, uh, the, the founder, really the, the driver of what's going on here at DevOps yeah. Enterprise. How are you, Gene? I'm doing great, Brian. Up? I'm doing, <laughs> doing great. I mean, uh, it's just, uh, I love the, um, in fact, let's put it this way. There's no three days where I learn more than you know these events where we're finding kindred spirits, fellow travelers, all sharing their journey in terms of, uh, as you and I were talking about earlier, why are you embarking on this journey? Or what did you do about it? And what were the results? And uh, being very specific about uh, you know uh, the practices, the principles, and, and more importantly, the practices. Right. I, you know, I I told you this is. This has been as good a conference for me in terms of learning as, as any that I get to. It's great. We're seeing practitioners. Um, they're talking about how they're doing it. We're seeing patterns start to yeah. emerge. Um, what, what, what do you say? I mean, you've been around DevOps for a long time. You, you know, the community that you're around here. What, what's the state of DevOps today? Is it is it strong? Is it is it growing faster than you thought? What's you know just highlights? Yeah, I mean, I think that in my mind, there's kind of two uh, strong themes that coming that are coming out of this. One is you have organizations like Target, like uh, Nationwide. Um, Capital One, Capital One right? America. Uh, we invited them all back this year to, to share, they were all presenters last year, and uh, uh, in some cases uh, share how their journey has progressed. But in some cases, uh, with uh, all the ones I had mentioned, the more I learned about their DevOps journey, there was, there was a reason behind that I even found more astonishing, right? And so Heather uh, Mickman and Ross Clanton from Target talked uh, more about you know, the specific business need of uh, you know, how do you enable developers to get qu data quickly from the systems of record without waiting six months, right? And uh, it's like, you think about the business value that's created by that, it's just astonishing. Capital One saying they're really, we heard about their journey last year, but what they're really trying to do is build a world-class uh, technology organization, right? Because that's what's required uh, in order for them to win in the marketplace. So in, in some cases, uncovering the why was, uh, just, uh, was just fantastic. The other, uh, category of stories I'm just loving, right, are the people who are embarking upon it now that we haven't heard from, uh, who are just starting, like Western Union, a telegraph company, <laughs> right? Yeah, Sherwin-Williams, uh, Sherwin a, Williams, paint a paint company, right, exactly. Uh, and then, you know, U.S. Patent Trademark Office. Uh, so uh, those are, I think those are all indications that, uh, and validation that DevOps really is addressing a need that is in every industry vertical, that spans every company size, you know, profit, not-for-profit, is just, uh, uh, I think further evidence of that, which is just great. Right. No, and uh, and I think it really highlights. You know, for a long time, all we heard was Netflix and Uber and Airbnb, and it, every, a lot of people felt like, well, maybe this is just a Silicon Valley phenomenon. I'm excited. I mean, Nationwide Insurance is here. They're in Columbus, Ohio. You know, uh, Target's in Minnesota. Uh, you know, we're seeing it spread into other places. And, and what's really neat is we're seeing people not only say, "Hey, we." We, st we did a we did a Skunk Works project. We did a Lighthouse project. I mean, they're building dojos. They're yeah. building centers of excellence. I mean, how encouraging is that that you're seeing it spread geographically, which means it, it's going to hit more regions, more more opportunities. Yeah. In fact, the talk that I loved so much from yesterday was Dr. Steven Spear from MIT, uh, sharing about his lessons learned stu uh, studying and decoding the Toyota production process 20 years ago, and his work with Alcoa and the U.S. Naval Reactor Corps. And one of the capabilities that he talked about that's common in every one of these high learning dynamic organizations is the ability to take local discoveries and turn them into global improvements, right? So, yeah. you know, local learnings can be turned into global learnings. And I think the, this acceleration and, uh, and you know, when you have someone like Topo uh, at Capital One or uh, Ross Clanton at Target, they're saying their charter is now elevate the state of the practice across the entire organization. And so now you have practices like the dojo, like internal consulting uh, organizations, you know, coaching. I mean, I love this, right? Because essentially that really is the next step is uh, we've proven it works in one area. And now how do we elevate the state of the practice for thousands of te you know, technology workers in the organization? For this conference, I did a, just a quick uh, estimate. I think of the, I think there are about 500 plus organizations represented here. And so I think they represent so almost a million technology workers, right? So you think about if we can, elevate the productivity of that many technology workers. I mean, I th think we're talking about a significant contribution yeah. uh, you know, to, you know, to you know, the, the world economy. Right, well, and I think, and you're a humble guy, I've known you for a while, 
this is an interesting phenomenon that's going on here, and, and you should you should be very proud. I know you're not going to want to take all the credit for it, but you know, in the past when you had institutional learning, you had these transformations. They got locked up in consulting companies. You know, a lot of that. This is this is community sharing with community. I mean, you've got like we talked about. I mean, th these are big companies that, in some cases, they compete with each other, in other cases, they're they're complementary, but they're sharing openly. You're you're driving interaction. Like that's got to feel really good, it, and it's reshaping you know how people are are going to try and learn. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so interesting. I mean, you and I both saw um, Team Target hanging out with Team Nordstrom, right? Both retailers, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, groups that are even in competing industries sharing practices. And I, th I think that is uh, something that's really remarkable. But I'll tell you one of the coolest moments uh, for me yesterday was the Target folks said we were, we held our first internal DevOps days inspired by the ING team. Um, and it turns out the three people who uh, held that first, you know, seminal uh, DevOps days at, at ING. We're all in the room, right? And so, yeah, to be able to introduce them to each other was, uh, I think, very, very uh, right. it was just neat. And I think it just shows how small this community is. Right, right. I, you know, I, I grew up in Detroit, so the whole factory mentality <laughs> I, I've known for a long time. It's, you know, a lot of people say, well, the, you know, the factories went away, and and you know, automation's driven a lot of things. We're, we're starting to see more and more companies, and, and this got highlighted by Capital One, where, and you highlighted this, they're showing up at lots of events, and, and to a certain extent, you know, they're doing cool things that helps with recruiting. Yeah. Um, do you think we're going to see more and more people go, you know, it's it's cool and interesting maybe not to work at the vendor, because I'm, I'm using community technology, yeah. and I'm going back to work at some yeah. of these, because they're, they're, they're changing business, they're, they're impacting business. Do you think we'll see some of that shift happen? Uh, absolutely, I mean, when, when you talk about, I mean, what for the CEO of Capital One to say, we need to build a world-class technology organization, you know, it means that suddenly, um, in fact, uh, Topo talked about his uh, the first internal software engineering conference, and the fact that they had an expo area of 50 booths, all manned by Capital One employees, showing off their capabilities, was just, uh, you know, to be there was just amazing, right? Because it showed off this incredible pride of ownership, a pride of uh, what they're doing, and uh, they're selling, <laughs> right? In other words, uh, you know, it's an it's an internal marketplace, and if uh, they don't provide enough value, right, then uh, you know, essentially they are still they're very much competing with external vendors. Um, so I, I love that the pride of ownership. The second thing is, uh, you know, to build a world class technology organization means you need world class technology workers, and you know, I think uh, we all have this intrinsic motivation to work on great things. So I think. Uh, we're going to see a massive, uh, in the conferences that we've been to uh, many times, every talk ends with, uh, we're hiring. Right. I mean, I think it's uh, the competition for that, those people with those unique skill sets is going to get all the more scarce. So that's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. So last question, you know, last year, five or 600 people, this year, 1,200. You got to be really proud of that growth. What's the, you know, we're, we're seeing all these companies, you know, mainstream enterprise, what's the next big milestone, somebody from outside might look at it and go, this is really getting more mature, the, the right maturity for them. Any big milestone you can think of that you expect to see? Yeah, I, you know, we were talking beforehand about, you know, uh, what is it going to look like for next year? I, I, can't, I can't say that we've really been thinking about that much, but I think this is about the right size, uh, because we really do want to make sure it has a, uh, it lends itself to kind of the interactions that uh, we've seen all week long. Uh, you know, for me, one of the most interesting presentations uh, was the HP presentation. It was an internal transformation of the uh, internal tech, tech, uh, IT organization of uh, HP, serving 300,000 employees, talking about their Salesforce commissioning mobile application and their, um, you know, the telemetry support systems. Uh, I love this, but what was also very unique about them was that the CIO, Ralph Laura, was talking about, you know, who's overseeing an organization of 8,000 uh, technology workers. And so just to see what DevOps can look like when there is the highest level of support in the uh, in the technology organization. I thought that was something that we hadn't seen before. So I would love to see more of that. Yeah, no, it was great. And, and you should be incredibly proud. I mean, you're driving a lot of this. I mean, the community's driving a lot of this. Thank you for having us. Uh, like I said, this is this is a great event. Uh, tons of energy. People should be uh, really excited. If, if you're looking for great events, this is one, especially for the enterprise. Uh, Gene Kim, thank you so much for being on. Uh, Take, you know, keep watching everything here on SiliconAngle.tv. Uh, We're going to have all the videos for the whole week here. DevOps Enterprise Summit, uh, great event. Thank you, here from San Francisco.